there's so many things that contribute to either getting healthy or creating a disease. And there are many things that people are doing that create this health or disease. But today we're going to talk about something different, something that a person is not doing that's contributing to a disease. And this is called an omission. Those omissions are really hard to see. So whether an omission being uh, something that's lacking in your diet or in your environment, you don't really see those things because they're invisible. So today I'm going to talk about how the lack of physical activity, no motion, can affect your genes. And it is significant. It's actually quite fascinating. Um, I talk a lot about nutrition and food and things like that, but I don't think I have any videos on this one topic and how that impacts your health. It's quite interesting. So before we get into it, go ahead and type down below how much physical activity or exercise you do on a weekly basis. So let's first cover this uh, definition of the word sedentary. And that means a person has a tendency to sit for a long period of time. The derivation comes from the Latin word, which means sit. If you're sedentary, you sit a lot, either watching TV, during computer games, or whatever. Here's the problem. Our bodies were developed to survive with a lot of motion. And so if you really evaluate and look at the genetics inside our bodies, um, boy, does inactivity create a lot of problems, both in the activation of disease-promoting genes, as well as the inhibition of health-promoting genes. Because our genes have developed long ago with motion, our bodies now, because we're so sedentary, create a lot of issues just because of this lack of motion. In fact, if you look at physical inactivity, that comprises 31% of the population 15 years or older. So let's talk about how that impacts our health. And the study that I'm going to summarize right now is just comparing people that get less than 2.5 hours per week of physical activity to those who get more than 2.5 hours of physical activity. Their risk of breast cancer goes up by 22%. Mortality increases by 41%. That's your risk of dying just with physical inactivity. Incredible. Cardiovascular disease increases by 43%. Your risk for getting diabetes increases by 85%. Death caused from cardiovascular disease, from diabetes, is at 92%. Gallstone risk increases by 49%. Colon cancer increases by 85%. Risk of stroke increases by 117% just from physical inactivity. Mind-blowing. You know, we have this concept that uh, taking time off, having leisure time is going to increase our survival. You know, sitting on the beach doing nothing, that might help for a little bit because it's going to reduce stress, but not for a long period of time. You need to be staying in motion to reduce stress. Now, I have a lot of uh, personal experience on this. If I don't physically keep my body in motion, boy, I have all sorts of inflammation. All the years of old injuries and arthritis start talking to me. I am a perfect textbook on this topic because I have to exercise or I don't do well. In fact, my body or my genetics is developed for a lot of physical labor outside like chopping wood or cutting trees down. How do I know that? Because every time I do that, my body does so much better. I sleep like a baby. I have no stress. Physically, I feel the best versus those times I do nothing. I think in my life between my late 20s and my early 40s, I don't think I exercise very, very much at all. And that was the time where I had the most problems. In fact, for me, I don't think it was until I got into my like early 40s that I really started to take exercise seriously on a daily basis. But now we know why exercise is important because it activates certain genes that increase your health, increase your survival. I mean, just exercise alone will increase your cognitive function and a sedentary life will decrease your cognitive function and your overall mood. And it really messes up your cholesterol values as well. They found that people that are inactive have a much worse lipid profile. People that are inactive have more uh, sympathetic nervous system activation. 
which is more flight or fight, which leads to more stress and lack of high quality sleep. People that have less physical activity have higher blood sugars, they have more insulin, they have more insulin resistance. This is why just exercise alone can greatly help your blood sugars as well as help you fix that insulin resistance. You see, this goes way beyond just exercising for weight loss. You wanna exercise for major health benefits. And another big reason why I personally exercise is it reduces inflammation. Now, that comes with a, a little explanation because you can overtrain and keep your body in an inflamed state. Um, when I reviewed my DNA profile, um, my greatest weakness was inflammation, okay? And especially if I overexercise, which explains a lot. Early on, uh, when I was in high school wrestling and college wrestling, boy, did I go into the season really strong, but you exercise every single day for like two hours and I would go home and exercise twice a day. And so I was overtraining. My genes are not designed to overtrain. Some athletes are lucky and they have genes that they can repair so fast. In fact, they have evaluated elite sprinters and their genetics are designed for massive power, incredible recovery. Their collagen repairs really fast they're less at risk for getting injured. So unfortunately, I don't have those genes. I wish I did. But for the majority of the population, you really want to make sure that you don't ever overtrain. But at the same time, for your own survival, your own health, you need to do regular, consistent exercise. And uh, very quickly, you could find out what type of exercise you need by doing different types of exercise and then seeing how your body responds to it. Some people are much better with power type, intense exercise, maybe with shorter duration, that's me. Whereas other people might do much better with endurance type exercise. I have the body that is not good for marathons or any type of endurance type exercise. So this is why I do short bursts of high intensity exercise with lots of rest and lots of sleep. So very simply, three recommendations, okay? Number one, consistent, regular exercise based on whatever you respond to. Now, it doesn't have to be exercise. It can be any physical activity. It could be working uh, outside would be the best, or it could be inside. Anything that increases motion would be a valid therapy. And the thing I like about physical work is you also are productive doing it versus just you know being on a treadmill. Number two, make sure your sleep is good. If you have problems with that, I put some videos down below for you to watch. And number three, this is a really big problem for a lot of people and this relates to exercise. You always, always, always wanna keep your inflammation low. So this would mean don't overtrain, eat foods that are anti-inflammatory. And I wanna just mention this one little point. There's a lot of research out there that people will tell you that red meat uh, will cause inflammation. It causes cancer, it causes this, it causes that. But they really don't differentiate between the grass-fed, grass-finished meat versus grain-fed, you know, the regular meat that you get at the grocery store, which these animals are fed omega-6 grains, which increase the inflammation versus the grass, which gives them omega-3 fatty acids. So really, there's a huge difference. If you're consuming grass-fed, grass-finished animal products, you are eating a food that is anti-inflammatory. Now, the same thing with fish, right? You have farm-fed fish versus wild-caught, especially salmon. So all the seafood is very, very high in omega-3. Omega-3 is extremely protective against inflammatory genes and against overtraining when you're exercising. Vitamin D is another really, really important anti-inflammatory nutrient. It's the most important fat-soluble vitamin especially during the winter, you need to take vitamin D. And even during the summer months, it's becoming more and more common for people to find out they have genetic weaknesses with absorbing or activating vitamin D, in which case explains a lot. It explains why their immune system is low, explains why they have aches and pains, because vitamin D is intimately involved with so many different biochemical reactions. So vitamin D is at the very top of the list as far as important nutrients. Fasting kind of goes along with exercise as far as 
the ability to influence your genes. It's called epigenetics. And so if you're doing a lot of snacks, that's bad. You need to do intermittent fasting, okay? And also exercise. Those two items should be emphasized just as much as what you eat. Now, since we are on the topic of physical activity, I did a really great video on explaining the basics of exercise and how you can use that to optimize your results. Check it out. I put it up right here.